In this video, we use our laser machine to create an open-air mini ITX computer case out of wood. We show you all the steps from laser cutting the wood to assembling the computer and include some fun mods in between that take advantage of the unique look of the case. This is the second computer project we're doing that uses the same case design. This time, however, instead of acrylic, I'm going to make the case out of wood. I think this will give the computer a completely different look. Even though this was the same design as the acrylic version, because the wood thickness was a little thicker, all the joints had to be adjusted in the cut file. So after making the adjustments, the design was quickly checked for fit in Fusion 360. This case was cut from 8th inch Baltic birch, which was masked on both sides to keep the surfaces clean. The largest piece of the case is about 7 by 12 inches, so this could be easily cut on small home hobby lasers like a Glowforge. I'm also going to change the color of different hardware components to change the overall look of the computer. I think a copper color would complement the wood. Most of the color changes will be done using vinyl sticker material. I used our GraphTech cutter to create a new design for the memory and to cut some circles to cover the fan stickers. For everything else, I'm just going to cover existing logos and artwork with pieces of vinyl cut by hand. We outlined this process in a little more detail in a previous video. We'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Before the motherboard will go into the new case, there are a few components that will be easier to add now while the motherboard is out and more accessible. Here I'm inserting the M.2 SSD drive that will be used for the operating system. I want to put the CPU in before the motherboard is put into the case, but before I do that, I like to paint the cooler's radiator so that it matches the other components better. I had a little Rust-Oleum anti-copper spray paint left over from a previous project, so I'm giving this a few light coats. I don't know if you ever use these spray cans with the fancy top, but they absolutely suck compared to traditional spray buttons. I know there's some concern that painting the fins will reduce their cooling effectiveness, but I don't think there will be much impact. I looked at a number of sources, including other YouTube videos, and the general consensus is that the paint won't have a significant impact on temperatures. I'll check them later to be sure, but I'm not too worried. Also, I believe that by having this all open to the air, this will offset the extra heat that would have been generated in a typical enclosed case. Now that the painting of the radiator is done, I'm able to add the CPU and, and cooler. The CPU was inserted with little to no fanfare. I then just had to add the cooler's bracket needed for the AM4 socket setup. I used the thermal paste that came with the cooler and spread it onto the CPU with a piece of business card. The cooler attached to its bracket with two screws. 
I tightened them each a little at a time so that the cooler evenly seated itself and didn't put too much stress on any one area of the CPU. I then just had to attach the cooler's fan using the included spring clips. The fan was oriented to push, not pull, air through the fins. With the motherboard ready, it was time to actually make the case. I removed all the paper mask from the lasering process. If you look closely, you can see all the burn marks, especially on the bottom of the parts, that would show if I hadn't masked the wood. This really shows how clean the parts come out by taking that extra step before lasering. I used a regular wood glue to assemble the pieces. Any excess glue wiped off pretty easily. This wood can sometimes have a little warping to it since it's a more natural product. The case uses small enough pieces that warping isn't very noticeable, but I use some small clamps to help keep the pieces together while they dry just in case. Adding the brackets that will secure the graphics card were the last bits of the case to be glued. The case was all glued together, but I still needed to put together the adjustable front fan bracket. I added brass standoffs to the case. These standoffs are female on both ends, so I can attach them to the case with screws. Alternatively, I could have used the normal type with threaded male ends, and then attach them with nuts. I thought the screws looked better on the back side though. The case was sized to use an SFX power supply. It was easier to add the power connectors to it now before I inserted it into the case. The power switch I use will light up green, which will match the color theme I'm going for. Links to all the parts used in this build, like this switch, will be listed in the description below. I wanted to attach the SSD drive to the back of the case. I needed to use standoffs so that the drive had a little distance away from the case to give the power and SATA cables room to connect. The M3 size standoffs fit the SSD drive mounting holes perfectly. Then it was just a matter of attaching the SSD drive to the back of the case with screws. I attached the fan to the adjustable front fan bracket. The bracket attached to the case with some brass thumb screws and nuts. I set the position of the fan so that it will push air toward the graphics card. The graphics card and power supply will be pretty close together, so adding some additional airflow between them might help with cooling. I routed one of the power cables between the motherboard and case so that it looked a little cleaner than running it around the back side of the case. With that done, I could finally put the motherboard in. Plugging in the computer power switch to the motherboard's front panel pins requires better than 20-20 vision, of which I definitely do not have. Once I finally got those tiny jumper cables plugged in, I was able to add the memory. I needed to connect the SATA cable to both the SSD drive and the motherboard. And then I had to run the power cable to the SSD drive. Somehow, things were starting to get a little tight. That's what she said! The wires were hanging out and not in a good way, so I wrapped them up and tucked them away. I didn't like the colored wires of the power switch showing. I couldn't find my black electrical tape, so I used a piece of black vinyl to cover them. I should have done this earlier when the power switch cable wasn't plugged in, but 
I just didn't notice it or think about it. And finally, I just needed to plug in the graphics card. I think it's a good size for this case. It's also nice that it only needs one power connector because there's not a lot of room for another cable. Because of the way the case was designed, it would have been hard to have traditional holes to screw the card down. So I opted to move the holes away from the card and just sort of sandwich the card's bracket using brass thumb screws. This seemed to work well and I think it looks good too. Thanks for watching! Let us know in the comments what you think, and if you've ever thought about doing a project like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more computer-related projects coming soon. Stay tuned!